The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the February 7th, the mag magical, magnificent edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what these bulls and bears, what these buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. You send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers. Then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Less Show. Right now, we got the mixed bag out here. You've got the Dow up slightly, 17 points, basically flat. The S&P's off three, flat. NASDAQ 100, a little more than flat. It's down 47 points or three tenths of a percent. The Russell's not flat. It's up a half a percent. Nine points out there. The semi's up 22. Trendy's up five. New York Stock Exchange is up 35. Gold's up 12 bucks. Trading at 1819. Silver up 57 pennies. Trading at 2305. Lights recruit back a buck 20. She's trading out at 9111. Lead the charge dollar wise the upside we've got booking holdings 48 bucks amazon 39 micro strategy 24 snowflake up 23 trans digim group up 16 to the downside it is google off 61 bucks chipotle 21 sarin's inc off 22 or 34 percent netflix down 11 bucks nearly three percent and facebook off 11 and facebook looks just horrible facebook is trading below last year's low folks if you want to understand when a signal generates a bearish signal or a bullish signal, all you have to really do is take a look at last year's highs and low. In the case of Facebook out here, we'll just take a quick peek at it. We'll put up the uh, chart here for Facebook. What we're going to see here is that, well, that's not the annual chart. i got to do the annual chart to do that. So let's get this switched over to an annual chart here. And you will see, now, Facebook, since it's uh, since coming public out here, it has never traded below, never traded below a prior year low. And this year right now, not only is it trading, well, it hasn't closed below it for the year, but it most certainly is. So there's something else, there's something wrong going on with uh, Facebook out there. So just simply, that's what's going on. You know, sometimes if we just use the simple things, and, and this one here is very a very simple technique, is just trying to understand where an instrument is trading on an annual basis to make a determination whether it's in a uh, bullish mode or a breakout mode or not. Okay, so that was with regard to Facebook. Let's go take a look what's really going on in our um, in the equity futures markets out here. So we're going to switch charts. If you give me just a, a moment, we'll change the uh, screen and we'll go to the daily time frame. That daily time frame in the upper left hand corner is going to show you the ES mini. So here's what we know so far. The ES mini has a valid bottom. It was a buy the D point bottom. It was formed with this hammer candle. It's also a Gartley buy pattern out there. Gartley buy pattern. Now I have a couple of different profile levels out here. Unfortunately, our time to, from time to time, the Ninja Trader uses the same data, but the same data sometimes will generate different profile levels. So here's what we know that's most important about the ES Mini, and that is this, is that as price is still holding its red oscillator and change line. Now, red is dangerous to the upside because when you're just trading above a red oscillator and change line, just as you may rally, not that you are in breakout mode, but you could rally up to the next resistance point. So 
Here, because there was a Three River Evening Star, forgetting the profile levels, the key area of resistance for the ES Mini is the high from February 2nd. And that high out there is 45.86. If price were to close above that, we would then have an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, or we would likely have that. There's no TD9 counts, there's no topping signal out here, and with price above that red oscillator and change line, we have to entertain, we don't have to, but I'm suggesting that we entertain the idea of a further rally, and then maybe where does it, um, you know, go kaput. If we take a look at the NQ out here, the NQ, so this profile is actually the same as on my black background charts, are very close to it. And uh, the most important thing to identify here, to recognize here, is the fact that this has a bearish structured profile. Price got above it on Friday. What happened? And on Thursday of last week, price pulled back to the level where it should have pulled back if the message here was just simply a counter trend move to the downside. So John inside the Tiger's Den asked me a question about the NQs, thinking that, hey, maybe this is just lurking in this 14,000, uh, uh, not 14,000, well, 14,800 ish area. And 14,874 is what I pointed out to him is the top of the profile. So, absolutely, we've got sellers that are here. But we really have two different meanings. I don't know which one is going to come to fruition. Uh, but I do know that unless the NQ closes below 14,484, all that the NQ has done is suggesting to you and I that price wants to move to the upside, not to the downside, at least just yet. But look, you've got sellers at 14,874, absolutely. And um, But if price can get above that, that's going to increase the odds of at least a run to 15,653, the TD9 count breakdown level. No other patterns that are out here other than the potential of an A to B equals CD to the upside, but we're not there yet. The only piece of it is, again, taking a look at these profiles, seeing price action, what it's doing here. And right now, the signal is counter trend move in that pullback, expecting price to move higher. If we take a look at the Dow equity future contract, well, it has a uh, it has a uh, buy the D point pattern. Also, price pulling back and just testing that red oscillator and change line. So in this case here, price is held. Now, the real resistance level on this is going to be the high from a few days ago, the high from uh, February the 2nd. And that high out there is priced at uh, 35,590. If price were to close above that, that would tell us about a move to 36,390, the TD9 count breakdown level. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 has a confirmed TD9 count bottom. It has a um, wave number seven, that's letter G. So it's got those two patterns that are out here. And in the case of the Russell 2000, also holding its red oscillator and change line. But I'm gonna switch back to the black background chart so you can take a look at those profiles as well. Um, so they are slightly different in some instances out here. In fact, in the Russell 2000, it's a gigantic difference. So I wanna go ahead and show you those. Again, both are valid. We use both of them. But here we take a look at the black background charts. And you look in the very right-hand panel for the Russell 2000, you're going to see this is a gigantic bearish structured profile with support holding at 1982. And that would suggest that price may want to run to the 2152 level. In fact, we've got some fairly large wide profiles. The, Do the Dow's profile, the YM's profile, the one that is in play right now, that is the third largest profile since 2007 as far as points are concerned out here. So what do we? how do we summarize this? We'll summarize this by coming back and taking a look at the intraday time frame charts out here. But we either, are, looks like, are forming an A to B equals CD to the upside or an A to B equals CD to the downside. And Stevie's not sure which one it is just yet. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago. And the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com.
TFNSradio.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, folks, let's try to clear up some of Stevie's confusion out here. And we're going to do that by taking a look at the uh, weekly chart for the Russell 2000. Now, you may, may remember, may recall, just before we went into the breakout there, we were looking at the daily time frame for the Russell 2000. We were looking at a very wide market profile out there with support having held, which was at 1982 on the daily basis. And the resistance zone is between 2152 and 2180. We know that's where sellers reside out there if price were to make it up to that level. Well, when we look at a weekly time frame, chart what actually transpired last friday for the russell 2000 which is the weak indice out here it generated a weekly gartley buy pattern now there's not a lot of weekly gartley buy patterns in the russell 2000 i don't know how many i'd have to go back and take a look at them but if you want to take a look at coming off of the march 2020 low this is the first gartley buy pattern that's out here okay so what does that mean well when we take a look at the oscillator and change line, we know that it changed colors two weeks ago. We know that when it changes colors, whether it's going from red to green or green to red, that that's a signal that the move, whichever way it is, to the upside or the downside is likely to stall and that we should see price and that line catch up to each other. Now, it may be a combination of price moving lower or higher, the line moving lower, but right now, that's priced at 2132. Remember, on the daily profile, the range is 2152 to 2180. So the signal that is coming from the weekly time frame chart for the Russell 2000, the weak indice, is it's formed a Gartley buy pattern. And that says that price should go target that oscillator and change line. Now, that may be the extent of the rally, where again, that right now is priced at the 2132 level. We know that's going to move up or down uh, as uh, as price as a time moves on here. But that right now is our range. So to try to clear up some of that confusion, where I said, I don't know whether we've got an A to B equal C to the upside or to the downside. And we have the Russell that is outperforming today. So the Russell is actually doing what it generated from a signal standpoint that you and I on Friday based upon its weekly time frame chart out there. So I'm leaning more towards, and we need more information still, but leaning more towards this pattern here is sending a signal to you and I that we should expect a rally inside the equity markets out here. That would, of course, uh, get um, negated with a close below the low of the pattern, and uh, that would be the low of uh, the uh, last week. 
no, two weeks ago in January. That would be the area of 1892.40 out there. So uh, if I take a look at the other time frame charts out here for the Russell 2000, again, the daily, we've already taken a look at its signals. You've got bottom patterns on the 30-minute chart, a TD9 count. Now you've just got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal on the 60-minute chart on the 120. Uh, what does Stevie have out here? Nothing that I can see that jumps out at me. On the uh, well, on the five-hour time frame chart, you've got a TD nine count. So, if uh, so, that's a that's a good time frame for us to use here. This would then suggest if price can clear the where it's trading right now, two two thousand eleven and ninety. I'll give you the exact number out here. So that was at uh, two thousand eleven eighty. And we're 2011.80 right now. If price can close above this level, you shouldn't see a move up to 2052.40. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. If price closes above that, then that uh, A to B equals CD pattern on the daily time frame chart will likely take hold. Now, what's that going to look like? Good question. Let's go uh, switch back over and take a look at that possibility. So let me change screens here. Back to our black background chart. And the A to B equals CD for the Russell 2000 on a daily basis out here would look, the, look like this. The A point is on January 28th. The B point is the high from February 2nd. And the C point would have been last Friday out there. And uh, that would take us up in the 2122 as the 1 to 1. And the 2167 level for the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD patterns out there. So the Russell is the one that is providing you and I with the potential of the uh, signal as to what the intent of the markets are. And so then how you place that together, if that's going to come to fruition, then I can tell you that the next uh, the next level, the next thing to fall to confirm that message is going to be the spot volatility index, which right now is trading out at 23 bucks, even Stephen, and the level that it needs to close below is 22.34. Now, whether it does that today or it does that tomorrow, maybe it doesn't do that, but not until that point in time, when the spot volatility gets below its 50-day expense moving average, will we be able to further say that there's that possibility of an A to B equals C D to the upside? But I do believe it's the Russell, and I don't mean I don't mean to belabor this, is the one that is generating the signal that says that is the likely outcome with the weak indice generating the weekly bottoming pattern out there as well as the daily time frame. Now there are four or five requests that have come in uh, by email out here. So let me get to these. I don't want to get too far behind. Hector wants to take a look at Exxon Mobil. So uh, if you give me, well here, I'll just get the three time frame charts going. And Exxon Mobil, I believe that what Hector's interested in mostly is the, because he loves that A to B equals CD pattern. So here's the weekly A to B equals CD. Now this is a small one. Let me just expand out the chart. I say it's a small, well, it's gone away. So so now that I expanded it, let's take a look at, it's really not a small one, so to speak, out here. Let's take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. And I'm just going to start with just slightly more conservative, not much con not much more conservative, but I'm going to use the low out here, Hector, from the trading day, uh, trading week of, that began October 26th. That's our A point. Our B point, the week that began June 21st, the C point down into August the 16th. The retracement was a 0 0.382 retracement. It was really 37.93% out here. The volume on that swing point, that B point from June 21st was, well, I can't see it. Now we can. The volume there was 116 million shares. It was passed with 151. So there's your confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. So on a longer term, which is what Hector and Patty are interested in, this has a one-to-one -one price target of 85.91. More likely than not, I would say 95.11 would more likely be its uh, at least its 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 target. In other words, I'm saying this is more likely than not to do more than a one to one A to B equals CD to the upside. Boom. Stevie, get your grammar in order here. So 85.91 is one target. 95.11 is another target. If we take a look at Exxon Mobil, it is trading above its weekly, daily, and monthly profiles. Now, in the case of Exxon Mobil, though, let me get the other charts here. If you give me just a moment. Get back to these radio show charts. We'll pull over Exxon Mobil. What Exxon Mobil is doing on a daily time frame is it has generated a TD9 count top. Now, the actual high of this pattern is going to be today. Whatever today's high is, is the key level to watch. So far, the high for Exxon Mobil today is 82.76. That doesn't mean that's what the high of the day is going to be. But whatever that high is, that is a key threshold level. So, Hector, if, for example, tomorrow, whatever that high is, price closes above that, then the TD9 count pattern will have been negated. 
and will tell us about a strong momentum move to the upside and bring into fruition that weekly chart out there. So that's the only topping signal that we have for ExxonMobil. There's also a TD nine count pattern for light sweet crude. So no big surprise that it's, you know, kind of stalling today out here. The weekly chart only in bar number seven. So there's no topping signal there. And the monthly chart uh, basically bar number six this month. And this is suggesting over time what ExxonMobil wants to do is get up to 100.43 out there. Now, I had made a comment earlier about Facebook, about how just a simple tool, take a look at where an instrument is trading in relationship to the yearly charts out there, will tell you whether that instrument is in breakout mode, breakdown mode, maybe just consolidating or what have you. So here on this right-hand chart, we'll go from the monthly to the yearly time frame chart, and voila, you've got ExxonMobil in full out breakout mode. It's a, not just above last year's close, it's above last year's high, which was 66.38. This suggests that ExxonMobil wants to continue to move higher. $95. Zero to a TFN. We'll be right back. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're looking at ticker symbol here, PRQR, for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And this is pushing into a swing point, Dan, with volume. So it's trading right up into where sellers are at, the top of the daily profile, 587. 
Uh, you've been up today as high as uh, five ninety nine. Uh, but prices, you know, and it's and the swing point here is from a few days ago, the trading day of February 12th, uh, February 2nd, that had volume of 873. You're already at 840. So it's pushing into that swing point. If it can close above, it really needs to close above 596 out there. Then, yes, you're right. Then the next level of resistance would be 619. Uh, at 628, you also have a little resistance. That's the top of the monthly profile. So the answer to your question, I believe, that you're looking for, what level does the uh, PRQR need to close above to suggest that it wants to run higher? I'd go with 6 28. If price can do that, then it at least likely gets back to where it has been consolidating in the 9 ish, 865 ish uh, type area. You had mentioned 764. That's the center of its profile. I would say more likely than not, if it can get back inside this weekly profile, that it would more likely than not target the descending trend line. Uh, out there, Dan. So that's what I see. So this looks like it wants to, you know, take off and explode. It still has to overcome those sellers. It has the volume to do it. So the question would be, why hasn't it done that? But it may do that by the end of the trading session. So thanks so much for the question. Hope that helps you out and have a, a terrific day. Craig writes in and Craig says, uh, greetings, Steve. Uh, would you like your thoughts about land six to 18 months out? Not that good, Craig. But we can go take a look at land, L-E-N-D, first see what it is, try to give you our best analysis here, and try to figure out what it's got to do first. Also, perhaps for another time, probably, okay, have you, okay. All right, so uh, your, uh, the other one I will uh, reply to uh, privately on. And uh, let's take a look at the Gladstone Land Corp, which right now is consolidating with inside of its uh, daily profile. And that's between a support level of 2899 and a resistance level of 3166. On a weekly basis, price is also trading. Wait a moment here, get this. Is trading with inside its weekly profile. Support here 2844, resistance 3287. So kind of a little bit exceeds the lower part of the daily and the higher part of the weekly. So that seems like the more likely consolidation pattern. And on a monthly basis, Gladstone is in a breakout mode from a profile standpoint by trading above the top of its monthly profile. Let's pull this over here. Take a look at the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly charts. You're wondering what's this going to do for the next 6 to 18 months. Well, here's what we know right now. Back on the uh, 28th, what land did was generated a TD9 count bottom. It also generated a buy the D point, which in this case here generated a Gertley buy pattern. So it did it with that bullish hammer candle. So to the downside, it is that day that is most key to you, and that's at 2826. If price were to take that out, then we'd be looking at an A to B, a larger A to B, equal CD to the downside. That would signal a move to 2301. The oscillator and change line is contained price. It did it on Friday. It did it on Thursday. You broke just slightly above it on Wednesday, but it found resistance at the top of that profile level. So right now, I've got nothing more than a consolidation. Now, is this pulling back? Was Friday the C point of an A to B equals C to the upside? I don't know. It's a possibility, but we can't go there just yet. So you've got the work cut out for you. And at 3246 would be the only level on a daily basis that price would have to close above to give you the all clear sign as this were to move up to the upside. So forms a TD9 count top, forms a TD9 count bottom. And now we kind of have this consolidation pattern. And so maybe that's really the message right now for us, uh, Craig, is consolidation. On the weekly chart, it also has a TD9 count top. Price pulled back to test support, the bottom of that profile. So that just says, okay, consolidation oriented. And on a monthly time frame chart, I have a sell the D point because of that dark cloud cover. And this would suggest that price could pull back to test its oscillator and change line. Hey, look, it could do more than that. But 26.91 on any pullback should be a level of support. So all in all, I think what we have here is just a good old-fashioned consolidation right now and not anything else to give you a uh, idea as to where this thing might head for the next 6 to 18 months. But I do appreciate the confidence in asking Steve that question, and if I had an answer, I would absolutely give it to you, but I don't. With regard to your other items, I'll get back to you. Probably will be later today because it's a busy afternoon, but I definitely will follow back up with you. And if I don't, Please send me another email just as a gentle two by four reminder because, you know, when you hit me upside down with a two by four, that means everything is happening for me. In fact, uh, Dan in Boston, you've got that two by four as an emoji somewhere. You can go ahead. You can. Well, now the next time I screw up here, there you go. All right. You can you can ding me with that. But let's go to Peter's question now. Peter says, boy, Peter, this is really small print. My eyes are good. They're just not that good. So it says, uh, Steve, I can read that out. Can you look at the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line? Please, please. Yeah, during the rally, 
did I get to the zero or the plus 150 area? So now those are two different things. The zero 150 area, I believe, maybe maybe you're still talking about the advanced decline line. But let me get to the New York Stock Exchange charts out here. So on this case here, the center line is the advanced decline oscillator, which may be what you're talking about, the plus 150 or minus 150. The six I've got down below the minus 250 area, which is an extreme oversold reading. And we've gotten the oversold bounce. Now, in this case here, our price is still below the zero threshold level. The C advanced client oscillator. And uh, that says that uh, the markets are in the hands of sellers. You had asked about the advanced decline line. So if you give me a moment here, uh, and I will pull that up on this chart. I'll close down. Well, let me just first open that up and see what that uh, shows us. So give me a moment to do that. Where is it? Uh, advanced decline line. Here we go. So up at the top here is your advanced decline line. So, and on the advanced decline line, I, again, I'm not sure what you're looking for here. This peaked out sometime, it looks like right around the um, first or second week in November of 2021. Never since then, it's been declining. Okay, uh, but uh, it's not like there's a divergence because we also had at the same time the advanced decline line was peaking out. We actually saw a peak in the New York Stock Exchange as well. Now there was a maybe a slight uh, poke of that peak, poke of the peak, peak spike back on January the twelfth out here. But I'm not seeing any kind of significant divergences, uh, Peter. Um, this is Peter from Park City. Okay, cool. So Steve, can you look at the New York Stock Advanced Decline Line? So I've got that, but again, I'm not seeing where it's providing you and I with a ton of information. But I could be overlooking at it. I'm you know I'm just putting a thirty second uh, if that if if even if even that long look at it. But with regard to your minus 150 level, that I believe you were talking about the advanced decline oscillator reading. And right now that reading suggests that um, that reading suggests that uh, sellers are the ones that are in control of the market. Now, the summation index is the next panel below. So I have that colorized, meaning when it's green, it tells me the advanced client oscillator is above zero. When that advanced client oscillator reading is below zero, that line turns red out there and tells us uh, whose hands the markets are in. So I hope that helps you out, Peter. Uh, thanks so much for the request, and uh, hopefully everything out in Park City is uh, great. My daughter was out there a couple weeks ago and said uh, she just simply had a blast. Well, how, how do you not have a blast in Park City? James writes in, and James says, hey, Steve, would you do your analysis on a Pfizer PFE just to have a small starter position? You'd like to buy more. So let's uh, do this. PFE is the ticker symbol out here. Let's go see it and what it is uh, doing. So right now, if we take a look at Pfizer, we've got a small starter position. Right now, with regard to PFE, it's trading with inside its daily profile. So your support level here, uh, James, is going to be down at 50.93, and your resistance level is 54.82. So we come back from this break, that'll give me just a little bit of time to do a little bit more work on Pfizer out here. And uh, where is this trade in relationship to last year's prices? Just kind of interested in knowing the answer to that question. Certainly not in any kind of breakout mode, so we need to see some really strong bottoming signals to take a long position. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Pfizer. We've got the yearly chart back up on our screen here. So in addition to uh, James uh, not trading above yesterday's and the last year's close, let alone last year's high, you've got a TD9 count top. It's the bar following bar number nine out there. And this suggests caution. I know you've taken a long position. We're going to step through this, but I'm, you're going to hear the words caution out of me, or if you haven't, you, you you likely will hear it again while we talk about Pfizer. At least that's the message from the daily chart. The monthly chart out here also has a TD9 count top. Now, when you complete TD9 count or any kind of topping pattern out there or bottoming pattern, what well, that typically says to Stevie is price will pull back to test that key level of support, which is typically first the oscillator and change line. In this instance here, this says that price is likely to go target the 4804-ish type area. That's where the oscillator and change line for the monthly time frame is currently printing. On a weekly basis, I would here you have another TD9 count top. Now, price just pulled back and tested the center of its uh, bearish structured profile, much like the NQ. If this is just a counter trend move, then price finds support, continues to find support at 51.30. So, James, that's going to be a real key level for you to observe because if price closes below 51.30, doesn't even have to close below the bottom of that piercing candle, just a close below 51.30 would signal 45.44 to 42.57. So your message to me is you have a starter position and make sure I keep a stop in that. We haven't got to the dailies yet, but we will momentarily. You'd like to buy more. The buy more here is at a much lower price. I would say 45, 20, 42, 57 based upon the yearly um, TD9 and the monthly TD9 out there. And that's the breakout level. The daily time frame shows us what? It shows a completed Gartley buy pattern. It does that when it generates this bullish engulfing candle on January 25th. Now, Confirmed bottoming patterns or topping patterns, in this case here, confirmed bottoming pattern says, hey, I'm going to go up and at least get to the oscillator and change line. Yeah, I mean, you hear you you hear me say this over and over again, and then we get to watch it repeat and watch it do its thing. In this case here, that's exactly what Pfizer did after it confirmed that January 25th by the D point or Gartley buy pattern when it generated that bullish engulfing candle. What did, stop, what did price do? It stopped right at that oscillator and change line. It was also near the top of that daily profile. But then four days ago, uh, what happened, James, is that oscillator and change line changed color. And you got that test immediately. You got it on the very following day. And that is a bearish test. Not until price closes over that oscillator and change line, which is currently 53.72, will it suggest the potential of a further rally to 54.82, maybe 56.75. But right now the message is bearish and it wants to trade lower. So this is likely going to pull back to 50.93. And if it closes below, really at this stage here, it'd have to be the low of January 24th out there. That low is 49.82. If you close below that, then that would be the signal that Pfizer is getting ready to take a uh, dive to the downside. So 
You've got all these topping signals on each of the time frame charts that we looked at, except for the daily, that has a bottoming signal. But it also generated, a couple of days ago, a bearish signal. That price at least wants to head lower and maybe move back to test that next level of support at 50.93. So just be careful on this one, James. I see the bottoming pattern, but when we take a look at the larger time frames out there, it just really suggests being very cautious when it comes to uh, Pfizer. And I, I'll just go on record. I would not be surprised to say that the high in Pfizer was last year's high. And that's really what it looks like out there. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. So we've gotten through, it appears we've gotten through, just checking just to make sure. Nope, we did not get through all of them. There are a number of other questions that have come in. This one from Tim, Tim M. Tim says, does it look like APTS is close to a bottom? So let's go take a look at this APTS. First, let's go figure out what APTS is. And then let me get to APTS on one of my other charts. So close to a bottom. Hmm. Okay, and this is trading up towards its highs. Am I reading this right? Does it look like APTS? Yeah, that's what we've got here. Is close to a bottom. Hmm. Okay, let me pull over the other charts out here because you're you're trading up at the highs out here. So let's go find out when this last formed a bottom, if we can find that. Um, so you've got certainly an eight. This is the daily. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the weekly chart. Let me just start with the daily on this one kind of get a feel for anything that we're looking at. So this formed a TD9 count bottom. So your bottom, most recent bottom, Tim, looks like that formed on, well, the TD9 count pattern didn't complete until the 31st. It was bar number eight that generated that low. Remember, you do that, form that bottom price, typically takes up the oscillator and change line, which it has done. Today, you're above it. And what price is dealing with here for APTS, Tim, is 1801. And 1801 is a TD9 count breakdown level. If price is able to close above that, all that's confirming is that price is going to go make its way for its recent highs out there. And I'm referring to the highs from January 3rd third that gets you back into the 1927 ish area so 1801 to close above that but with regard to its last low that was a td9 count pattern um, and there was also an a to b equals cd that completed on that piercing candle on barn number eight on january 28th with regard to the weekly time frame chart what do we have out here certainly an a to b equals cd to the upside that completed to sell the d point but price above that oscillator and change line which is green this suggests that price wants to go tag that shooting star that high out there in the uh, you know 19 and change level what's the actual high out there that is going to be 19 dollars and 27 cents the monthly time frame it's not bearish at all we do have an oscillator and change line that did change color but we don't have the topping pattern so, yes, price and that line should catch up to each other, but that is more likely to form when we get some type of topping signal, and we do not have that. So this is suggesting both the weekly, the um, monthly charts are suggesting higher price, and the daily says you close above 1801, and uh, it definitely should go back to its highs. Now, from a volume standpoint, uh, you've got volume so far today of 470. It got, has it got, no, it hasn't already gotten to the swing point. That swing point had 1.9 million shares, but it hasn't gotten there. It's just below it. Let me make sure. The low is 1830. The high today, 1827. So um, you'd prefer to see this thing not try to take off today and go test that because then you'd have a rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. And that's usually not great news out there. So, Tim, I hope that helps you out with regard to APTS. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Susanna writes in, and Susanna says, uh, I'd like to see your analysis on Bitcoin and Mara. Uh, Mara's in a Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining. You're long. You'd like to add the position. Uh, is it time to do so? Do you know what company or platform is legit to use for cryptocurrency trading? I've been scammed by a couple of them, and I'm scared to deal with anyone. I do not know. I don't have any experience in uh, trading Bitcoin other than I did take a uh, trade in the Bitcoin futures. So that I've got confidence in, but I don't think you're trading Bitcoin futures out there. I don't. I really don't know enough about uh, crypto, so I, I can't point you in a direction there. But I can point you in a direction as to what Mara is doing and what um, – uh, Bitcoin is doing. So you asked about Bitcoin first. So let me switch over to those charts here. Go we'll find it. And uh, I believe we're going to be rolling over into the next Bitcoin futures contract out here uh, within a couple of days. Coinbase is the safest. It's, it's what's uh, being uh, thrown out there as Coinbase uh, for you. But uh, just use, use, use some caution. So 
what we've got out here is still the um, the uh, February contract is still the uh, active contract for Bitcoin. And on Friday, it closed above the top of its profile, which was 38,242. And if we take a look at the March contract, which we'll be rolling over here shortly, price is taken on that resistance level. So a close above 43,630 for the March futures contract for Bitcoin is going to suggest higher price. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Susanna will continue looking at Bitcoin as soon as we get back from this break. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the Bitcoin. We've got the February contract up on our screen. Uh, this is for Susanna. So, Susanna, uh, when I took that trade, it was back here on a TD9 count pattern. And what Price did was ran up right up into resistance where the sellers were at the top of the profile. And then went ahead and backed off and moved lower. Now, I don't really have a bottoming pattern, per se, down here. Don't need one. We don't always get that when something uh, bottoms. But what you can see is that price is above the top of that profile. That took place on Friday. Follow through today. You're really right back up to where price found resistance back on January 13th. But what we don't have is any kind of uh, profile or anything of sellers out there. So it does look like Bitcoin wants to continue to move higher. That being said, you asked about Mara as well. I'm just going to go to the uh, white background charts. which will only have about a minute before the show is over. And as we take a look at this out here, what I see is... Um, and I don't really see a bottoming signal, doesn't matter. 
prices traded with inside a bullish structured profile, and to the extent this is going to follow Bitcoin, you say that it is, then what price should do is make a move to 29 or 3139. If price can close above 3139, uh, then you've got something here. That's the TD9 count breakdown level. The weekly chart out here shows that the oscillator and change line change colors, and you have a TD9 count bottom. So that really suggests, now there's a battle that's going on right now, and that's at the center of its weekly profile, and that level is at 2584. The top is at 3011, top of the profile. But because that oscillator and change line change colors, and you've got a confirmed bottom, Mara should make its move up to that 3396 level out there. So, Suzanne, I hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in. And everybody else, I want you to stay tuned because we've got some great programming lined up after this show. We've got our favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. And then Tom O'Brien. And he'll take us on home. So to recap the uh, markets out here, you've got the ES Mini and the NQ. You've got those nice descending trend lines. You've also got rising trend lines out there. Remember that the uh, the Russell 2000 the weekly time frame chart has just generated the first Gartley buy pattern since the March 2020 lows out there, and that suggests we should see the Russell 2000 rally. Gold, we're looking at that to move up to the 1830-ish level, and if silver can get above 2278, then it should move to 2334. Have a magical Monday, folks. Thanks so much for joining me.